Welcome into K-State Online. I am Mason Vo, joined by Drew Galloway as we are here to recap a not very fun finish for the K-State men today. For as exciting and as great as the K-State women played in their win over Texas, so props to them. The men did not come through in the waning moments like the women were able to in their game against Texas. K-State lets one slip in Lubbock, 60-59, to the final score. There are a lot of places that we can go to start off this instant reaction, but I think the the number one place to start in this game is if we had to pick like a word of the game, it would be screwed. And I would start by saying that K-State screwed themselves in this game in numerous ways. Will McNair was really bad for a good stretch of this game. Uh, he did not grab the ball and was costly in allowing second opportunities for Texas Tech, he had some bad moments on offense that also hurt them. And then it was a collective effort offensively blowing the game down the stretch. This team has all season long been terrible in late clock situations. I have no idea why this is something that Jerome Tang and his staff can't figure out. I mean, uh, I think if you look at what is going on with this team right now, with how limited they are in depth and how much they have struggled in certain areas, the fact that they're in this position and playing at the level they are, that is a credit to this coaching staff. But the one thing that they are blatantly terrible at, and I don't know that you can find an explanation for why they're so bad, their late clock decision-making has just been, eh, let, let Tyler Perry chuck one up. You know, like Let's just let this clock run down and throw up a bad shot. I, I don't get it. It was a bad decision, and then obviously it looks worse when the clock doesn't go, and that that's a whole snafu and everything. So that was a problem. K-State was bad there. They they got out toughed in a lot of ways. But let's flip to the other reason why I say that screwed is the word of the game. It's because the officiating in this game was a massive issue. And this is not just, oh, they lost the game, refs suck, blah, blah, blah. Texas Tech might be the most physical team in the league. Like they are turning into what people They're perceive West Virginia. Virginia to be. Yeah, exactly. And – Somehow in this game, Texas Tech only committed 10 fouls. It's unbelievable. I mean, I don't know how that's possible. But even if you want to look past the fouls that were not called on Texas Tech and some of the ones that just make you scratch your head on K-State, also the fact that, I mean, Cam Carter is trying to not come down funny and hurt himself or somebody else, and Warren Washington shoves him while he's on the rim. That's blatant. The bucket and the foul that gave Texas Tech the win, Joe Toussaint clearly travels on. I mean, K-State should not have been in the position to let officiating dictate this game. But they did, and when it got there, the refs were terrible, and they blew it. They gave K-State the death blow. It's like K-State was driving along the highway, and the big W deer, they smoked it. And that thing is on its dying breaths. And the refs, they walked by, took, took a look at it and said, this thing's not going to make it or it's going to have terrible quality of life. They just shot it in the head and killed it on the spot. That's what the refs were in this. They gave the death blow to K-State's chances of winning the game, but K-State gave them the opportunity to do so. Both have major, major reasons to be at fault for this. And the last thing that I will say on this, and – you know, it's not this guy's fault. He doesn't get to dictate necessarily what games he goes and do, does, but the league calls him up and says, hey, we want you to go do this game here. One of the refs on this crew, this was his first Big 12 game ever, and they said, ah, you know what, Texas Tech. On the road, one of the three or four toughest places to play in the Big 12 when that building is rocking, and by all indications, it was rocking tonight. And you send him there to officiate a game with a team that might be the most physical in the league. That, and he was in the middle of a lot of the things that decided the game. If you watch, any time that somebody had to be separated or they were dishing out important calls, that ref was in the middle of it. K-State should not have been in a position to let the refs decide this game, but when they got there, the refs had a major impact. It was impactful to Texas Tech, and at the end of the day, K-State didn't deserve to win the game they played today. Yeah, but, you I can look at it and say Texas Tech didn't play well enough to win that game either tonight. They just benefited in the long run. And, uh, I mean, that's that's my big takeaway. K-State screwed themselves. They gave themselves the opportunity then to get screwed by the refs, and thus that is what ended up happening. So I'll, I'll give the floor to uh, 
the uh, the the senator from Topeka. <laughs> you uh, you use one word to describe the game of screwed. I'll say just frustrating would be my one word because that I mean the first ten minutes that was probably the worst that K State has played the entire season. Yeah, followed up by something. Fo- followed up by probably the best ten minutes that K State has played the entire season when they went on the twenty three to three run to end the first half. And then it just it felt like everything that could possibly go wrong in the second half went wrong for K State. Texas Tech was getting loose balls, which is a I get so frustrated when another team out hustles a, a team because it means that like one team like really it seemed like they cared more and it seemed like Texas Tech was diving on the ball for the loose ball. They were rebounding much better. Uh, I mean, I, I imagine that you have the stats pulled up in front of you right now, but did you have you realized like the the rebound uh, disparity that Tech had in the first half compared to the second? Tech's second. Uh, yeah, I I do. I realized that there was there there was some level of difference uh, in, in what went down. Uh, my stat Texas, broadcast is locked up for me right now, so I can't really help you. Uh, Texas Tech had eight rebounds in the first half. They had twenty three in the second man it with 10 of those being on the offensive end and I, I posted this as it happened i posted this right after the game that the the sequence that lost k-state the game was cam carter fouling inexplicably 70 feet from the basket with k-state up six points with 235 to go you're playing good defense at that point yeah and he takes some frustration out and fouls and then, of course, the, the best free throw shooting team in the league by far is Texas Tech. They finally miss one. David Kassan doesn't get the rebound, and it's an and one for Texas Tech. Yep. And, and the lead goes from six to two in a span of two seconds. Yep. Like, that's a thing that just can't happen. And it's why, like, you've kind of made the joke about, like, how this team isn't very smart. That is a very stupid thing of a team to do, mm-hmm. to let that happen in that situation. It, and then Tucson did travel uh, like that definitely happened. The thing that I take more like precedence for me of why that play is so upsetting for me is if you're any of the K State players down there, I think that it was David Gasson, Cam Carter and Will McNair. If you think that there's a possibility that you might foul Joe Tucson in that scenario, do not let him get a shot off there yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, like the the fact that he's able to get a shot off and it goes in is really bad when you have a two point lead, and it, it just goes that this team will have stretches where they look so good, and it will, then will turn around and five minutes later you wonder how they had a big lead in the first place. Like they they played. I I think it's because if you look at it like. This is not a talentless team. This team no. does not have as much talent as last year's team, but this is not a talentless team. But the way that a, teams can go from looking so good in certain stretches and so bad in others is if you're not playing smart. And, I mean, you're right. I, I have said all season long, I don't think this is a smart basketball team. I, I don't think that this team has a great comprehension of how to play basketball. And you may say, these guys are division one basketball players. Like they're, they're really good. They are really good at playing basketball, but to some extent, like just cause you play really good, doesn't mean that you know the game really good. And I think it's become apparent that this team has some serious mental lapses. And when you have mental struggles on the basketball court, it leads to defensive breakdowns, which we saw a lot of to start the second half. I mean, K-State was up 11. The lead got shrunk pretty quick. It was because the defense was not firing on all cylinders like it needed to. I think then we see when this team goes through some offensive slumps like they did to start the game. The passing was terrible. The decision-making when it comes to sometimes Will McNair, I mean, he was the poster child for it today when he does get the ball. He had a really bad turnover where it's like, why are you dribbling right there on the baseline? Don't don't put the ball on the floor there. There are just so many different things. And then the end of the game strategy or whatever you thought it might be. I mean, um, I know there, there are quotes going around of Jerome Tang trying to explain it on the postgame radio show. And he's saying that, you know, they were trying that he thought maybe they could get a foul drawn there. And that was probably wrong of him to think in this game because Casey only shot some free throws. Look, I don't care if you shot 30 free throws in a game. Your last shot opportunity should not be trying to draw a foul 
and think that the refs are going to reward you and do that. The last thing refs want to do is call a foul with two seconds left to shoot free throws and give you the lead. Like, especially I don't, Tyler I don't agree with the, that. Especially with Tyler Perry being the player with the ball in his hands. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's just kind of a victim of Perry being so much smaller. And like we saw with Marquise Noel, like refs kind of swallow their whistle when Perry has the ball too because of his size disadvantage. So, like, if you're trying to draw a foul in that scenario, why not give it to Camp Carter or Arthur Kaluma and let them try and get to the basket? Like that. And I think what's kind of lost in this and why for me it's so frustrating, I pointed out uh, in the what we learned in the West Virginia game, we talked about it in the instant reaction. Winning on the road in this league is really freaking hard. So, if you have any chance, and especially a team that like you, I, I think that K-State's a tournament team, but right now they don't really have a good enough resume to make it. This is a chance to go on the road and win a quad one game against Texas Tech, where winning on the road there is almost impossible, it seems. K-State, we talked about it, uh, winning in Morgantown in the House of Horrors. Lubbock is also a House of Horrors for K-State. So to kind of lose the game in the fashion that K-State did, I think it makes it more frustrating because you had a chance at a big signature win for the resume right now. And, and you kind of wonder how does blowing a lead like that impact you going forward on Tuesday night? Like you, the K-State went the last 321 without making a basket. Yep. And, and you just can't do that on the road or, or honestly, even at home. I mean, and, to that point, K State they don't get a bucket made in the last three twenty one. Tech made four of their last five shots. And we've talked about how good this K State defense is, and you've got to be better than that defensively closing out a game. And the, you could also say, well, like that's not necessarily genuine to what happened because some of those came on putbacks and and ones. That makes it even worse that that rebound. you're giving them that opportunity to have the and one and get these putbacks like. It just it 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 was a a not good outcome for K State, and I, I will also say this: I mean, K State in this game, they to, to out rebound Tech still, even though you know Tech had the the big flip around in the second half. Like it's it's tough to not come out a winner in this, and so I will I will still harken back to like this is not a bad basketball team. Your takeaway from this game should not be a bad that they're a bad basketball team, but it's okay to be angry and upset and think that. They they don't have enough of whatever they need right now to get over the hump in certain games. Um, I, I just think this is probably an indication that this team is going to win some games like they just lost this season. But yeah. they're also going to have some very painful losses. And I will also add, like, the fact that they were able to come out after looking so, so bad for, what, the first 12 minutes of the game, basically, um, that's a credit to them because early on, I thought this was going to be like the, the TCU game in Fort Worth last year where it just kind of became apparent early that K-State was going to show up and get run out of the gym and hope that they turned around and played a major game and got a win against a good team at home uh, in the midweek, which they did last year They when they beat KU. Um, so credit to them for not doing that. It just stings that you had a double-digit lead going into the second half and you botched that opportunity because, again, you gave – you gave the officials the opportunity to dictate the outcome of the game. And when you get down to those final couple of minutes, you have 37, 38 minutes of evidence to tell you that, hey, this game is getting called to Texas Tech's favor tonight. And now, I don't think that the referees intentionally set out to benefit Texas Tech in this game. But the way they called the game, it did benefit Texas Tech. And in a, a call that shouldn't even be dictated by styles of play, they miss a blatant travel by Joe Toussaint, who he skids and then also changes his pivot foot to make the and one and get the free throw to give Texas Tech the win. It's a it's a tough outcome for K-State because everything that I thought could happen in this game, it, it really did. Well, I mean, if you go and look at what I said in, in pick and preview, the only thing that did not happen that I thought K-State needed to do was the bigs needed to have a good game. And you didn't really get that. You got 14 combined points from McNair and Gasson. They weren't really offensive threats at all in this game. And, you know, Gasson, who had been a rebounding machine through the first couple games of Big 12 play and really all season, he only grabs four rebounds for you tonight. He was a non-factor. 
McNair ends up with nine boards. He probably should have had 15. He let a yeah. lot slip through his hands. He had five turnovers in the game, and you just weren't able to, to step up and come through. But everything else, look, Texas Tech was due to have a bad shooting game. They are not as good of a shooting team as they've been. That checks out. They were 5 of 25 from three, 20% on the day. And I just thought that K-State would be able to have an opportunity because, you know, despite the wins and stuff, and K-State had played well, they hadn't played above their skis in some way with shooting the basketball. They did that tonight. They were 10 of 23 from three. And so the fact that you had all these things go your way, it's just really tough. And in the end, you also weren't able to have somebody come through with the big shot. I mean, there are some of the final numbers there uh, for, for K-State and Texas Tech as the Cats now. Uh, slipped to two and one in Big 12 play, 12 and four overall. Tech, I mean, 14 and two, three and zero start to the Big 12. Uh, the Red Raiders are in a really good spot. And we, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit, but I will add to this like the officiating, as bad as it was, and, and the foul numbers are bad, and, and how they're not, you know, more even, especially when you just know how Texas Tech plays. Like, I would not be coming on here and telling you guys that. The, the officiating had some part in this game. If Texas Tech was pillow soft and they played off everybody and K-State wasn't inside and giving touches to certain guys, like all this stuff. But the way the style of the game played out, there was no reason that it should have been this wide of a margin. And it certainly dictated how things came out because as Jerome Tang noted in post game, while misguided in how he got to talking about it, K-State shot seven free throws the entire game. Texas Tech, they shot 18. Uh, in the second half, K-State shot six of them. Tech shot 11. So that's uh, where uh, a major difference in this thing comes from. So, again, I, I think the final point and the biggest takeaway, this is not a bad basketball team. They make bad decisions with their head, players and coaches included. They got to work on that. And I don't think it's so bad that they can't improve in certain situations as the season goes on. But they're not a bad team. They very well could turn around and beat Baylor on Tuesday night. And I think this is a tournament team that just screwed themselves today and then allowed the officials to to finish it off for them. Yeah, I mean, it's just frustrating how the game plays out. Because if you go in and you say, Casey starts 2-1, and one, lost Texas Tech on the road, I, I think everybody would take that. But it's the being up eight. It's the way it happens. Yeah, it's it's being up seven with three minutes to go and losing the game that really hurt. It's it's like all these. It's like honestly, it's like how K State football has started some seasons in recent memory. Yeah, where you go and you take a look at it and like think think back to last year. Now, obviously, we know what last year turned into for K State, but and so you would rather have it go the way it did. But after the Oklahoma game, you're like, okay, this team's three and one. I, I would have expected that. It just it stung because the loss was at home to Tulane and you won on the road in Norman by putting up a million points. It's like, well, 2020, same type of deal. Like, yeah, you just beat Oklahoma on the road and you lost at home to Arkansas State two weeks ago. Like, how does that compute? Um, so I, it, it's one of those deals where, like, K State being two and one right now is fine. It, it's probably what the expectation should have been given the schedule. Still it just, it just hurts too. afterwards knowing that the opportunity was there to win this game. Oh, yeah. Three, you know. and, and still a chance to start four and one, but like you, that's one where like you look back and if you go two and O oh over this next week where you look back and I know that this team probably isn't shooting for the big 12 title, but if they yeah. would have started five and O oh, that that's one where you really think, holy crap, this could happen. And especially like when you lose uh, the way that they lost tonight, four and one just seems worse because you were so close from five and oh. Uh, I'll also add that you said Texas Tech, four of their last five shooting. They Probably the best look that they had was all that they missed. Yeah. You know, the top true. Isaac's wide open three. But well, yeah, look, that, I will I will add this too, uh, to, you know, you're talking about, the, the Big 12 title stuff. I actually think it's probably good for this team that the the smack of reality comes and it's like you don't even have to consider that being a thought right now because I don't I don't want any more on this team's mental plate right now. Like obviously they've got a lot of other stuff. They don't need to be worrying about a Big 12 title. The the last thing to mention here is depth is extremely limited right now. You can also like 
as much as we can say K-State made this mistake, this mistake, and this mistake, and the refs played a part here, and Texas Tech did some things here to, to win the game at the end, in fairness to K-State, the depth issue should be mentioned. And in some ways, like K-State, what, they came into the year with an open scholarship already, and then you lose Naquan Tomlin. How, how much of that is your fault? Not, not really something you can control. You lose Quez Glover before the season even starts, and then you think you're getting him back, and then you lose him for the rest of the year, uh, as expected, I guess, by Jerome Tang. Like, depth is extremely limited, and then you show up in Lubbock today, and Data Ames is all of a sudden in a boot. And it's not like Data Ames has played fantastic basketball this year, but you got to give guys breathers at times. That's why when K-State goes up five, Jerome Tang has to call that timeout bef when, before the under eight is going to get triggered because – the game keeps going, and Tyler Perry or Cam Carter or these guys, somebody needs a break every once in a while, and mm -hmm. you're just not able to, to get that opportunity. Um, the, that's that's probably the biggest thing right now that could beat this K-State team down as we go down the stretches. Guys are going to be asked to play a lot of minutes, and it's going to lead to some tired mechanics and, and maybe even some mental breakdowns at times in games. It, maybe that's what part of today was. These guys were – overworked and overstimulated and led to some issues. I don't know, but K-State has already enough that they have to overcome without dealing with depth issues, and it's it's really sad to say that because going into the season, we thought this team was going to be deeper than last year's team. Not better than last year's, but deeper, and yeah. that's just not the case. I mean, this team is is way short of depth compared to what last year's team was. Yeah, it's crazy like thinking about that because we went into the season, everybody kind of thought the high level talent might not be where it was last year, but everybody expected this team to be so much deeper and be able to go eight, nine, 10 guys. And right now with no day day aims, you could even say that I'm not sure if I'd be more, I'd be comfortable putting six guys out there uh, during the, the stretch of the game. That that's just where we're at right now. And it, it, it sucks that they've had so much be out of their control. But it's kind of like I talked about uh, last Sunday with like RJ Jones and Michaela Bridge and Taj Manning. It's time for like one of them has to step up. Like th this is your time. If, if Data Ames is going to be out for a while, one of you needs to find a way to be constantly in the rotation and be able to be trusted. Because I, I mean, there was a time where uh, the, the lineup uh, for K State tonight had. R.J. Jones, Dorian Finister, Cam Carter, and then uh, Gasson and Will McNair because yeah. they, they just are short of guards. And, and it's, it's it's so tough because like when you when you do a lineup like that, I just I don't think that you can. You're feeding the guards to the wolves. You're, Cam Carter and Tyler Perry, you're going to get very little when that is a lineup on the floor, and that's happened too many times this year where Cam Carter or Tyler Perry has been paired up with four guys that. Look, they're fine. Fourth and fifth options, maybe. You know, maybe sometimes though they're really killing you. Those guys happen to be options two or three out on the floor. It's it's just a, a tough spot. So K State is in a a they're going to have an uphill climb. But again, I think the takeaway from people should be this is a good basketball team. They battled hard in a tough environment against a team that is playing better than what we would have expected going into the year. First year coach situation down there with Grant McCaslin. He is a well proven coach. There are some players, and you're getting some stuff out of them that you wouldn't have expected. And United Supermarkets Arena, we know when it's loud and going at you, it's a big time deal. The good news for K State is you are now coming back to a place that is up there in the same top four that I mentioned. I mean, probably the four toughest places to play in the league. We know Allen's number one, and then Bramlage, Hilton, and United Supermarkets can all fight for who's two, three, and four. I think yeah. that's probably the order. You're going to have probably a massive crowd against Baylor, big time opportunity against a team that might be three and zero in the league. And you win you're Tuesday night, you're right back into the top. So, and K State can do it. K State can beat this Baylor team. We'll see how they play tonight against Cincinnati. Baylor has not played very well to start the year. They've skated by in both of their games. There is an opportunity for K-State to get a, a signature win on Tuesday night, and hopefully they're able to push the bad from this game out, take some of the good with it moving forward, and just cross your fingers and hope that Tyler Perry figures out 
he can play good basketball and shoot it well in both the first half and the second half in the game. The 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 twenty minute splits for him, I we got to stop it, Tyler. Figure it out. Shoot well both halves. Give it to me. Let's see how it comes through because overall the shooting wasn't bad uh, from three in the game. I mean, you'll take four of eleven. Not it's not as pretty, and people think four of eleven. That's a lot of missed shots. That's still like close to thirty seven percent. Like if he shot thirty seven percent from three on the season. Nobody would be complaining about Tyler Perry right now. It's just the volume looks a little off. The real issue, though, is he was 0-4 in the second half from three. He was 1-8 of eight from the field. Got to be better than that. Got to find a way to score. Uh, I'll also throw out that uh, another guy that needs to be better, and this just a, isn't a second-half thing. This is just he needs to find a way to be more consistent. Arthur Kaluma, yeah. two points on five on one of five shooting in the second half. It's also not great in a one-point loss. Yep, and that's and that's where we talked about, hey, we knew this team wasn't going to have the high-end talent of last year. Keontae Johnson and Marquise Noel brought it almost every single night. You knew what you were going to get out of your best players. For K-State, you clearly have a big three separated from everybody else on this team. You just you shake the bag and you dump it out and you don't know what you're going to – honestly, it's like, it's like playing Yahtzee. You throw the dice in the cup and you shake it and you don't know what's coming out and then, it, it, you know, Yahtzee. Or some nights it's whatever the bad thing in Yahtzee is. I, I don't know. I haven't. I don't played think it that there's a bad thing in Yahtzee. I think Yahtzee is just amazing, and then everything else is just kind of there. Okay. Well, I want I want to be screaming more Yahtzees <laughs> after games for K State, uh, and we unfortunately weren't doing it here. So that will do it for us. The Cats lose it sixty to fifty nine. Uh, hopefully, your Chiefs fare better tonight, and uh, my Cowboys don't let me down tomorrow. So. <laughs> That's how we'll leave it with better things on the horizon for all of us. The only person I hope has a real crappy weekend is Derek Young because <laughs> I hope he, well, I, I didn't hope that he enjoyed a K state loss today, but if he's going to have a K state loss, I hope he gets dumped with a giant Packers loss on top of it tomorrow. <laughs> so for Drew Galloway, I'm Mason Voth. Thank you for watching and listening to K state online. If you like what you heard or you want more reaction to K-State, Texas Tech, and everything else going on in K-State sports, head over to kstateonline.com at on3. We've got full coverage for you every single day on the Wildcats. The best you're going to get it is over at K-State Online. So we are out of here. Uh, you will hear from us tomorrow on the Sunday show. Fan will join us. I'm sure he's got thoughts from this game. He's probably a lot more elegant and kind than what, uh, than what I can be at times. So it's always good to hear from him. And then D.Y. and I will be around on Monday getting ready for the game with Baylor for the Cats. So we are out of here. K-State falls to 2-1 and one in Big 12 play, but this is not a bad basketball team and a big opportunity Tuesday against Baylor awaits.